Alright, so we've looked at how to calculate the percent composition. We've learned what the empirical formula is and how to calculate it from a percent composition. Now we're going to look at the molecular formula. So the molecular formula is the actual formula for a compound. So empirical formula gives us ratio, percent composition, just the percent of each element. Molecular formula tells us literally how many of each individual element there is inside the compound. So for example, let's say that scientists discover a compound and it's 85.6% percent carbon, and the rest of it is hydrogen, so 14.4 percent hydrogen. All right, that's just the percent composition. It doesn't really tell us much about what the molecule looks like. From that information, we learned how to get the empirical formula, so we can calculate the empirical formula from that, and we would find out the empirical formula of this particular guy is CH2. So that means for every one carbon, there's two hydrogens. That doesn't mean the molecule has one carbon and two hydrogens. That's just the ratio of carbon to hydrogen. So it's a one to two ratio. For every one carbon, you have two hydrogen. Then in a lab, they can do what's called mass spectroscopy, and they can use that to figure out what the mass is, and from that, they can figure out the actual formula. So what they would find is maybe this ends up being uh, C4H. Eight as its molecular formula. So as you can see, that molecular formula right there actually matches this ratio, so it's a 1 to 2 ratio. You have 4 and 8, and it also matches your percent composition. This empirical formula could be different molecular formulas as well, but let's say it was just that one right there. So what that means is this molecule is composed of 4 carbons and 8 hydrogens. So it would have 8 hydrogens around it. in whatever form we want to do it. So the molecular formula tells us what the molecule actually looks like and gives us a lot more of a uh, picture of what this molecule is, how it will react, and what kind of things we can do with it. So in this video, we're going to take a look at how to get to the molecular formula from the above information. So we're actually going to start with percent composition, typically, use that to get the empirical formula, and then use the empirical formula to get the molecular formula. So we will go through a stepwise process where you need to be able to do all of the individual steps in order to get to your final product. So here are the steps. There's five of them for calculating the molecular formula. And step number one, as it turns out, is to calculate the empirical formula. So the steps from the last video that you used to calculate the empirical formula from the percent composition, that's step one in doing this. So you're actually going to do all of those steps, get the empirical formula, then go on to step number two. So it adds a little bit of length to this process. Once you have your empirical formula, you're going to get the molecular mass of the empirical formula that you just determined. So that means taking that empirical formula, adding up the molar masses, just like you would for any other formula, and then getting that number. So you're going to get some kind of grams per mole number. Once you do that, you're going to take that experiment, you're going to take the experimentally determined molecular mass, which is given, Okay, so in the question, you're going to be given some molecular mass. And remember, molecular masses are in grams per mole. So you'll have this molecular mass that you got from your empirical formula, and then you'll have this molecular mass that you are given in the question. This will always be given to you. And then you're going to divide those two to get a ratio. So what that means is you're going to divide the given mass by your empirical mass. So your given number divided by your uh, step number two number. And when you do this, you will get a whole number. If you don't get a whole number, what does that mean? It means you did something wrong. You should always get a whole number. If you get a number that's less than one, it's because you swapped them. Okay, you put your empirical over your given. If you get a number that is not whole, if you get something like you know 1.28, it means you did something wrong. So check your masses again, and just be sure that you added up everything correctly. If you did add up your masses correctly, the more likely your empirical formula is incorrect. But you will always get a whole number, or very, very close to a whole number. 1.998 is a whole number. It rounds to two. That whole number is what you're going to multiply everything in the empirical formula by. So when you figure out that number, that is uh, the factor by which your molecular mass is different from your empirical formula. So you just multiply your empirical formula by that to get your molecular formula. 
So let's practice this one. We're going to find the molecular formula of a compound. We're given its percent composition, so we know that it is 40.68% carbon, 5.08% hydrogen, and 54.25% oxygen. And it has an experimentally determined molecular weight of 118.1 grams per mole. There's that given empirical or, uh, molecular weight that we talked about. So that's what we're going to use then in the step number three. All right, so let's move this problem up to the top corner so we've got some room. And we'll pull out those steps and stick them up there so we can follow along with this. <clears throat> All right, so step number one is to calculate the empirical formula. So this is what we're going to do using the steps from last time. So we're going to find our empirical formula. We do that by writing down our givens. And our givens in this case are all in percentage. And we'll just shortcut this because we know how to get the empirical formula pretty quickly. And so we're just going to write instead of 40.68% carbon, 40.68 grams of carbon. We went over that rule in the last video. And we were going to record all of our other knowns in the form of grams. And now we are ready to convert them into moles. So we're going to multiply each of them by the conversion factor to get them into moles. So one mole over its molecular mass. And as always, I'm going to record a couple more of the units than normal, just so that we get more accurate numbers. This is really important. And one mole of hydrogen. Oh, seven, nine grams. And oxygen is 15.999 grams. Use all of those to calculate out the number of moles. So we type these into our calculators. We would get 3.387 moles of carbon, 5.04 moles of hydrogen, and 3.391 moles of oxygen. <clears throat> Next step then is to divide by the smallest number. Okay, let's take a vote at home. Which number of these is the smallest? That's right, 3.387. So we're going to divide all of them by that and find out what number we get because this will tell us then the ratio of those molecules to each other. So 3.387 divided by itself is 1. 5.04 divided by that is 1.5. 3.39 gives us 1 again. And so since we have that 1.5 in there, we can't use that in our formula. It's not going to be C1H1.501. We need to get that so everything's a whole number, which means we need to multiply all of those by 2, because that'll get that 1.5 up to 3. And so once we do that, we find out our empirical formula is C2H3O2. So this particular molecule doesn't have two carbons, three hydrogens, two oxygens necessarily. That's just the ratio. So we need to use that information then to get the actual molecular formula. So what does it actually look like? Okay, just giving myself some more room. So here's that empirical formula we just calculated, C2H3O2. And now let's look up at our steps. So we've now completed step number one. That was fun. Let's go to step number two. Let's get the molecular mass of the empirical formula that we just determined. So we have two carbons, three hydrogens, and two oxygens. We can add up the molecular masses for each of those, and I'm going to use as many numbers from the periodic table as I can to get our molecular mass. So when we do that, and you can do that at home, we'd find out the molecular mass of this guy is 59. O four, and the units are grams per mole. So that's the mass of our empirical formula. So step number three then, we're going to divide the molecular mass that's given by the molecular mass of the empirical formula. So our given molecular mass is 118.1 grams per mole. And we're going to divide that by our empirical formula mass, which is the 59 0.04 grams per mole. And when we do that, we get almost exactly 2, which is great. That's a whole number. Uh, it's no decimals really to it, and it's above 1. So what that means then is our actual molecular formula is double our empirical formula. Since it weighs twice as much, 
that means the formula itself is twice as big. So the formula for this guy, we are going to take our empirical, which is C2, H3, O2, and we're going to multiply the entire thing by 2. That gives us a molecular formula of C4, H6, O4. So that means this molecule, this mystery molecule that the scientist is researching, has four carbons, six hydrogens, and four oxygens. The ratio is two to three to two still, so it matches up with our empirical formula, but this is what it actually looks like. From this formula, scientists can go on to predict its possible structures, possible uses outside of the laboratory. And here's one more practice that we'll do together. So this being the second one, my advice is go ahead and pause the video here. Try this on your own. Once you think you've got it or if you run into a snag, go ahead and restart the video. Check your answer or see where you messed up. Welcome back. Let's move this up to the top corner so we can see that. And I'm going to pull the steps up and put them up there so we can follow along with both of those. So to calculate the molecular formula from our givens, 57.84 grams of carbon, 3.64 grams of hydrogen, and 38.52 grams of oxygen. The experimental determined molecular mass is 249.21 grams per mole. So the first thing we're going to do is get our empirical formula. So we're going to write down our givens and convert them into moles. And so that will give us the moles of each of those. So for carbon, it winds up being 4.816 moles. For hydrogen, we get 3.611 moles. And for oxygen, 2.408 moles. Going to go ahead and divide by the smallest, the smallest being the 2.408, our oxygen. And that'll give us the ratio then. So when we divide them, we will get 2, 1.5, and 1. So with that 1.5, that we need to, means we need to multiply everything by 2 to get whole numbers. So when we do that, we will get our empirical formula of C4, H3, O2. Now that we're done with step number one, we can finally go on to step number two. So let's get the molecular mass of our empirical formula that we just determined. So we're going to add up four carbons, three hydrogens, two oxygens, and we get an empirical molecular mass of 83.07 grams per mole. And that is our experimentally, or that is our uh, empirical formula. The experimentally determined one is 249.21. So that's going to go on top. If you ever forget which one goes on top and which one goes on bottom, the rule of thumb is that the larger number always goes on top, because otherwise you won't get a whole number. So just put whichever one's bigger on top. And when you divide those two, we get 3. So that means that the actual formula is three times larger than the empirical formula, three times larger than the ratio. So when we write out the actual formula, it's going to be C, 4 times 3 is 12, H times 3 is 9, and O times 3 is 6. So the molecular formula for this guy is C12, H9, O6. That's it. Thanks for watching. Go treat yourself to a bowl of ice cream or something, and I will see you in class.